Thank you very much. Um, as Professor Matus already mentioned, my name is um, Daniel Braun. I'm a, a PhD student at the Technical University of Munich, and I work in natural language processing, natural language generation, and uh, specifically applied to the legal domain. Um, <clears throat> today, I'm going to present you one or actually two prototypes, which are all about analyzing terms of services. Um, although I have the honor uh, to stand here today and present this uh, research is always a team effort. So um, this is the team and our chair. And this specific project um, I'm working on with Patrick Hall and Elena Skepankover, um, just to mention them also here. And if you um, listen to the keynote of Professor Mattes um, yesterday, you already know that um, our chair does a lot of different research activities also in the area of legal tech. So we also, for example, have a project where we analyze um, patient consent agreements for clinical trials. Um, we also uh, look at um, summarizing texts and many other things. So if you're interested in any other legal tech topics, um, it might be worth to take a look at our website to get more information about our work in other areas. So um, this you might have also seen already yesterday. Um, it's uh, about the legal tech market specifically in the US. And what we can see, well, already today, um, $3 billion each year are spent on legal tech tools by law firms and um, companies. Um, about half of that is spent by internal legal departments. And the market is growing very fast and estimated to have a um, total value of $16 billion. And what we can kind of see is something um, like an arms race. So companies are getting more and more of these tools and due to the specificities of um, the American law system, um, lawyers in the US think that in a not so far future, it will actually become mandatory to use legal tech tools because the opposite side will use them. And in order to provide the best possible advice to your customer, you will also um, have to use them. And well, obviously um, some entities are excluded from this arms race. We as customers usually don't have the money to buy these tools and also nonprofit organizations don't have the money um, to, to buy these tools. And that's one of the things we um, address with this specific work. We focus on <clears throat> terms of service, specifically from online shops. Why do we do this? Well, I'm sure you're all familiar with the checkbox I've read and agree to the terms of services. And well, probably you have checked it at least once without actually having read them. And there's, um, you're not alone. Uh, I think we all know that, but there's also science to prove it. Um, there are different studies. Um, the first one was conducted on actual online shops, um, on 90 uh, different online shops for software. And well, the study find, found out that 0.1 to 0.2% of people are reading the terms of services. And reading is also always, you know, and they are opening it, they are on the website, whatever that means. And then there was a, a more entertaining lab study with more than 500 participants. And people were told to sit in a lab, so in a room, and were asked to register for a, for a social network. So a very artificial situation. And still 74% did not read the terms of service before um, they agreed to them, and well, those who read it spent on average 51 seconds on the website, which is usually not enough to read them. And there was a clause hidden in it that by registering, you agreed to sell your firstborn, and still 98% of people registered. So um, I guess that says a lot about the almost 30% who read it. Obviously, <clears throat> this all is an issue of customer protection. It is always the case when, as a, as a single person, I enter a relationship with the company that there's an imbalance of power because they have these big legal departments. Now they also have the legal tech tools. And um, this is, for terms of service, even more so the case because it's a one-sided contract, so it's drafted by the company, and I can either accept it completely or not, so there's no negotiation or anything going on. And also, as a customer, I usually have limited access to legal advice because, you know, who is willing if they buy something, a book online, who's going to take it to their lawyer? Um, probably no one. 
So therefore we think, and this is one of the things we want to show here, that legal tech tools can be a mean of customer protection in two different ways. And this is why we also um, have two prototypes. We can either directly support customers by giving them access to a legal tech tool, or we can support non-profit organizations like in Germany, the Verbraucherzentralen, who fight for um, consumer rights. And just a short reminder, if you haven't bought something in some time, um, what is the usual process if you actually want to look at the terms of services? So uh, what, you, what you see here is um, Zalando, and usually your screen starts somewhere here. So then you have to scroll well four to five screens until you will find in the lowest corner, there's a little button where you can get to the terms of services. And if you open them, it's about uh, two, four, six, six and a half pages print, printed on uh, a four of terms of services, which you would have need to read, which obviously no one does. So what is the idea of our Zatos project? Well, we want to first automatically identify terms of service on the web page, which means we want to um, automize the first step of you having to scroll down and searching for the link. We want to automize that. Then we want to conduct a semantic analysis of the terms of service with different NLP technologies. And then we want to assess the relevant clauses, whether they are legal, illegal, or customer friendly. So if they are, uh, if they give you more rights than is necessary by law. And then we want uh, to have an easy to understand presentation of the results and how such a presentation look like depends actually on who's the user. So for consumers, um, we build a summarization in simplified language because very often these terms of service tend to have long sentences with a lot of subclauses. So even once you found them, it's still difficult to understand them. Um, for professionals, like they work in the customer protection agencies, this is not such a big problem, but they want to process um, huge amounts of terms of service at the same time. And they also want to do automated rechecking, which means once they, for example, found an illegal clause, they want to check whether the company actually removes it from their terms of services. I'm going to show you some screenshots and later I'm going to show you the tool um, live. Um, so this is now from the consumer prototype. And the first step you do is well, you type in the URL of the online shop, your shopping ad and click on find terms of services and the tool then first gives you um, the URL to the, actually term, the actual terms of services. In the next step, this is now the semantic analysis and the assessment and we have three main elements. On the left side, you see the sentences which were extracted from the terms of service. So this is what is actually written in the terms of services um, and we have some highlighting here. So to basically explain the reasoning of the system. Um, the blue highlighting which you see um, shows why a clause is believed to um, be about a certain topic. So here we talk about withdrawal and warranty and the blue highlighting is indication why we think uh, this clause belongs to this category. And then the green uh, highlighting is the information we actually extracted. So in the first case, we see it's about withdrawal and we um, extracted that the withdrawal time is 30 days. Then in the next row we, column we have the, um, the assessment. So um, by European law, uh, you have to have at least a 14 day withdrawal period. So this is actually something that is customer friendly, this clause. So we give it a thumbs up. And on the right side, you then see the, the short summary, uh, which I talked about earlier. And here we just have examples of, so this is like neutral. So this is uh, legal, but not specifically friendly. And here we would have a clause that would be illegal and therefore um, gets a thumbs down. I don't want to go into too much detail about the technology, but I just want to show you that it's not some magic that is behind it. It's just, um, you know, solid software engineering, as Professor Mattis called it uh, earlier. So um, for, the, for identifying the terms of service page, we use a hybrid approach, which um, use rules and machine learning. Um, it's surprisingly effective if you just look at URLs 
and check whether there's AGB or Geschäftsbedingungen in it, because a lot of online shops actually use links like that. Um, so this is an easy and fast system, but obviously it doesn't help always. So we also trained a machine learning classifier, um, which was trained with 2,000 pages, which are terms of services, and uh, 1,000 pages, which are terms of services, and 1,000 which are not. And well, here you have some results because we are scientists, we like to do formal evaluations, but the bottom line here is it works actually quite well. So once we found the um, terms of service page, then we start a pipeline in which we do different processing steps. So this is the, the terms of service, service page like you find it, you have a header, you have a menu, maybe you have a footer, and you have the actual terms of service. And the first thing we do is we remove all the, the noise, um, like the header and the menu, so that we really just have the text of the terms of services. Um, then we use different NLP technologies like post-tagging tokenizer and dependency trees. I will talk a bit more about dependency trees later. But the idea is that we extract the information and then get something like this, a formal representation of what is the clause about. So here in this example, the topic of the clause is withdrawal. Um, with withdrawal, we are looking always for time spans. And in this specific case, we have a time span of 14 days. And this structured information, we can now quite easily compare with a knowledge base we have in where we have information about, well, what is actually the law and can compare it and then easily assess it. And then in the end, we use natural language generation um, to generate these short summaries from the structured information. So how does the information extraction work? I, again, I don't want to go into detail, but just to show you that it's not some, some magic, it's really just uh, we sit together with legal experts and we craft these rules which are based on regular expressions because actually terms of services are quite nice for you to analyze because it's highly regulated and therefore you can rely on finding certain keywords because they actually have to be used um, and therefore this rather simple approach works quite well. This is the first prototype, then the second prototype which is as I said more targeted at professionals, um, not necessarily lawyers but people who regularly work with terms of services and legal documents. Um, the interface looks a bit different. Here we can enter one or multiple URLs, but we can also upload a PDF or we can just um, put in plain text there. And the prototype we currently have, which we build together with the customer protection agencies, um, focuses on illegal restrictions on the form of termination. So if I want to terminate my contract, which, in which form can I do that? Do I have to write a physical mail or can I use email? Can I call? Um, and this is actually so one of the, the analyses um, they conducted. And again, you, you can see it looks fairly similar to what we had before, but um, we have now just a binary classification. So either it's legal or it's illegal. Um, but then again, here um, we have like the explanatory part where Bold says us, okay, this is why you think it's about withdrawal. Um, and um, green things are mandatory. So if it's mandatory to, uh, um, to, to cancel the contract by email, then it would be green. And if something is excluded, so forbidden, then it would be uh, classified as red here. Um, actually, in this particular instance, it can get quite complicated because um, you can have sentence where it says you are not allowed to um, withdraw from your contract by mail, but you are allowed to uh, withdraw by email and stuff like that. And therefore, the regular expressions are not powerful enough here anymore. And this is why we use something called dependency trees, which is what you can see here. And um, these are built by the Stanford Core NLP library. And it actually uses a neural network to build these dependency trees. And this dependency tree basically shows you the connection between the words in the sentence. So it shows you if there's a, um, a not to which part of the sentence this applies. Um, and so this helps us to do more sophisticated analyses. And 
um, the customer protection agencies actually used this first prototype to analyze um, terms of services from online fitness platforms. Uh, they are quite popular these days. And well, they looked at um, 25 different platforms and um, in these 25 terms of services they identified there were 23 clauses about the form of cancellation which the system um, all identified but it also falsely identified five which were actually not and um, within these 23 clauses we had six illegal clauses all six illegal clauses were found but one which was actually legal was also falsely classified as illegal. And now I would like to show you the, this, uh, the running system so that you don't just have to believe me that everything works, but I can actually show you. Um, so this demo of the consumer prototype, um, you find if you go to the website of our chair, um, there you will find a link to it. Um, it's actually a limited demo due to legal reasons, um, because obviously if you provide something like that, you might run into liability issues. So what happens if my system does something wrong and a customer orders and then there's a problem? Or what if I falsely claim that the terms of services of a, of a company are illegal and then they are not? So there are problems with that. Uh, so therefore there's just like a, a small demo. And um, so what we can do here is we can actually put in a URL. So I can, uh, for example, go to um, Amazon and then find terms of services and then well the the um, first rule-based approach is executed and then actually for Amazon the rule-based approach will not uh, succeed because you can see here that is the actual URL um, has no terms of service or anything in it uh, which is then found by the machine learning classifier and if we click on it well it really is uh, the terms of service page. And then because of the legal restrictions, um, we here just have some example terms of services which you can choose from and then you can click analyze and then the tool actually live analyzes them and you can see the, the results um, as you saw it before on the screenshot. Then um, the prototype which we built for the customer protection agencies is currently not available online but I can also show it here to you. Um, I have an example of terms of services as PDF. So we have here, these are the terms of services from an online payment service provider. You know, as you would expect, a lot of text. Five pages. So now, uh, if I want to know if there's something about the form of cancellation in there, I can just upload it here uh, okay <laughs> if my Mac is not crashing mm -hmm. yes so here I choose the PDF I upload it, so, and then the first step, it just, you know, converts the PDF into plain text, which I then can analyze. And then what I get here is the analysis. And again, we have this, this highlighting. So uh, the system found four sentences, which are about cancellation. And well, these three are okay but it found one where it thinks um, that there's an illegal restriction of the form of cancellation. And if we look at it, um, it says that uh, actually it's not allowed to cancel your contract by email, which is illegal. Um, so it's correctly classified here. And I, you know, if I have uh, larger terms of service or if I have multiple at once um, and I trust the system, a bit more, I can even say, okay, just show me the illegal clauses so that I get a quick overview. So, um, yeah, these are the, the two prototypes and um, now we focused on terms of services, but actually the technology behind this 
is uh, pretty much applicable to all forms of, of standard form contracts. Um, so there are other domains which are highly regulated, like for example, labor contracts and rental agreements. So you could easily apply this technology to these kind of agreements, but also in a B2B context, um, you have, for example, in the automotive industry where you have supply chains, you ha also have usually standard form contracts um, from the automotive industries, which they, uh, companies, which they send to all their suppliers. So you could also um, apply this here. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this short demo. We have some publications about it if you're interested in, in reading more about it. And um, I would like to hear, you know, if you have any ideas, if you see any other possible fields of applications, or if you have any questions, then please, now's the time.